Getting up close and intimate. Totally not taboo with Tracy. Celebrating sexual positivity both in and outside the bedroom. Hello, 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 and welcome again to another episode of Totally Not Taboo with Tracy. Um, this week we are talking to Sajiv in Asuri. He is a naked yoga instructor. And I personally have been looking very forward to this episode for a very, very long time. And as you know, um, on Totally Not Taboo, we talk about everything that is taboo around sex and sexuality. And Sajiv is um, a very all-rounded practitioner. And we're going to hear all about his different techniques. So he's not only a, a naked yoga instructor. He has a lot of tools up his sleeve and um, some of them taboo, some not so taboo, but I look very, very forward to having this discussion with him. So again, I ask my audience always to be open-minded and take all the information that you hear um, with a pinch of salt, sift as well, take what you want and leave what you don't want but just at least be willing to hear different options um, and, and just be, as I say, be open-minded to the other different types of ways that you can spice up your sex lives, that you can introduce more sexuality and sensuality into your lives. So without any further ado, welcome from Cape Town, Sajiv. Hi, Thank you for hi, coming Tracy. on to Totally Not Taboo. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for, uh, uh, yeah, and, and it's such a very interesting topic to be talking about today uh, on Totally Not Taboo. And uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity uh, for me to, to talk about it today. <laughs> Hopefully someone will hear it and learn something new. <laughs> Absolutely. So Sajiv, can you please tell us, our audience, about yourself? who you were or who you um, are, you know, tell us where you come from and how you got into the spiritual world and et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Um, so uh, it's probably not very traditional. You know, generally people talk about a spiritual world and they leave a corporate day job to find themselves. Um, Let's just say I'm still in the corporate world. Okay, yes. <laughs> I, still, I still have a normal corporate life. Yes. But I've always been fascinated with a very spiritual side, a very connected side. And my journey probably started off with a yoga practice. You know, very, very typical, very easygoing kind of like yoga. And I think, you know, like once you start, I think the yoga practice was also for me initially just a very physical practice you know you know a lot of people see yoga as an exercise and you know i must admit when i started yoga it was about the flexibility the health benefits um, i actually went to yoga because i used to suffer with my lower back mm -hmm. you know getting going to a chiropractor so, so i was one of those people that was drawn to yoga because of a physical thing you know like i was like a very very drawn to, to yoga because of that and i i then um i guess once you start with uh you know a little bit of a yoga practice then you start seeing a little bit of everything else you know you start seeing meditation practices you start seeing uh you know uh breathing and pranayama practices and you start to realize that yoga is not just an exercise in fact mm -hmm. now i actually tell people that yoga is not an exercise you know, mm. <laughs> I call yeah. it commercialized yoga versus non-commercialized yoga. It is yeah. really a spiritual practice to get connected with yourself. So I uh, I started, uh, like I said, going to yoga. Uh, must have been about seventeen years ago. So I've been I've been practicing yoga for quite a long time, and I think it was probably about six years ago I actually decided to do my uh, yoga teacher's training. And that also started, you know, when you go into learning more about yoga, you get a little bit more uh, deeper into what the topics mm. are in yoga. Mm. And uh, and that kind of starts another journey. 
Mm. And, and, and as that kind of progressed, I think um, I was on a personal journey. Um, and one of my main aspects was to really learn and understand about, you know, masculinity, understanding sort of like the role of masculine energies in the world. And, um, and that uh, slowly led me to uh, learning about men's naked yoga. And I was like, this is this is interesting. Like, you know, like I, I was I was unfortunately one of those people that was too afraid to even be naked in a change room at the gym. You know, I would wear like a swimming costume underneath and shower. <laughs> with with the swimming, swimming costume. costume. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You'll never see me naked at any point. And then yeah. um, yeah. And it just kind of led me to to learn a little bit more about myself. Mm. And and uh, I think that's what it really is. It's really about getting to connect to understanding that. And um, in in this journey um, of of you know learning about you know masculinity, also got to learn quite a lot about tantra. So I actually mm. uh, teach some tantric practices, and I also practice some of my own uh, practices too. Um, in in a large degree, uh, you know, I think the the big modern world has taken tantra to be purely a sexual kind of uh, practice but it it's it's only like an, a tip of the iceberg of the practice it's a I fully way to discuss practice. that with you yeah Yay. so it's a very 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 big um kind of practice so yeah so so that's a, a little bit i've done various forms of yoga ranging from vinyasa from buddhakon from aerial yoga to acrobatic yoga um, so a whole lot of various kinds of yoga. I, like I said, I became somebody who was very connected to the physical. Um, and slowly that led me to learning a little bit more about the spiritual too. So can you give us examples of how they differ, all those different types of yoga that you were talking about? Ariel yeah, and- yeah, yeah. So, so when I yes, started sir. yoga... I, I started uh, actually uh, with a style called Ashtanga Yoga, and it's a very uh, traditional style. Um, and the style that I did was what was seen as very the traditional way. And that is where, you know, when you go to a yoga class today, normally you have a yoga teacher, and the yoga teacher stands in the front of the class and sort of like does their class. They literally go and they will tell you and show you what to do. Mm in a traditional ashtanga practice it's not that you mm-hmm. you pitch up to the class it's normally super early in the morning like half past five in the morning or six o'clock in the morning and you literally learn the sequence slowly and you do it by yourself even though you're in a class kind of like setting and um as you learn through the, the primary series you are actually able to then practice it um on your own but with the assistance of a teacher around that will come and do an assist. And it's a very traditional way of learning yoga. Then vinyasa yoga uh, is a little bit more contemporary style of yoga. It's shifted more from, you know, very static movements uh, Mm. to going to a more flowy kind of way. Um, Mm. I I teach vinyasa and that tends to be very uh, connected with the breath. And breath is quite important uh, yes. when it comes to yoga and comes to a lot of practices. Oh, yes. and, and, and that's where vinyasa actually connects breath and movement together. It's a little mm. bit more flowy and, and you get to experience uh, movement together, put together with breath. Uh, still doing normally very traditional yoga poses, but it has, mm. has evolved quite a bit over the number of years. Uh, then there is aerial yoga, and aerial yoga is probably more of a newish contemporary style of yoga, where you use a prop to practice your yoga practice. You know, um, um, there are a lot of props that you can use in yoga, and this is using a silk hammock as a prop throughout the entire practice. Mm-hmm. And it's suspended on a ceiling or on a rigging, and you basically mm-hmm. use that to assist you uh, to do your movements. Uh, wow. So you, so yeah, it, it is actually quite a lot of fun because uh, you are not using um, uh, the ground as a point necessarily in a lot of the movements. Uh, you are using um, a hammock to hold you, to suspend you in air. So sometimes feels like you're floating. Um, and a big difference in aerial yoga is uh, when traditional yoga, a lot of the movements is pushing related. So you normally push against your own weight. In aerial yoga, you get to pull 
um, which you don't get to do in traditional yoga. Mm. And and it's quite a lot of fun. You get to make really interesting shapes and you get to work with a prop the entire time and it tends to be quite a lot of fun. And mm. uh, yeah, and I've, I've also done Budokan yoga uh, and Budokan yoga is a, a mixed movement arts uh, and and uh, it kind of uh, it combines uh, sort of uh, mixed martial arts together with yoga, together with um, calisthenic movements, animal locomotion. So basically, it just tries and puts a whole lot of different mixed movements together. Um, and so the yoga style looks a little bit like a dance because you flow. And it looks mm. uh, the focus is instead of just a posture, it works on the tra transitions between movements. So mm. it's not just you know holding a posture, holding posture, and um, it sometimes looks like a dance. Sometimes it even looks like you're doing martial arts uh, because it is. There's elements of martial arts in it, so there's a lot of different varieties in terms of the movements in it. Um, yeah, and that and that kind of like has. Uh, what you would see out in your, say, if I call it your normal traditional yoga spaces these days, uh, that you see these new practices coming out. Budokan, also a style of vinyasa, um, and it links movement and breath together. All, all, all um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm thinking yeah. of another form of movement called, um, it's the my tongue, um, also martial arts. Um, tai Chi? No, the other one. Uh, not um, Tai Chi. Uh, taekwondo? Taekwondo. It's a style of martial arts. Um, the, the also vertical. that like slow moving yeah. Um, yeah. from one position to another. I think, to, you know I think I mean? that is Tai Chi. I think that is Tai Chi. Uh, tai Chi where it is tai Chi, yes. Tai Chi. <laughs> it, yes. Does, it does look a little bit like Tai Chi, in fact. Um, it's it's using old Eastern movements in a in a new way to kind of deal with healing, and I think that's where uh, I tend to come up a lot of time is uh, yoga, tantra. They tend to all have healing elements, movement as mm. healing, you know, and and uh, there is so much one can do to you know mm. allow ourselves to de-stress from our normal lives. And, and this all brings it. So it does It does look also a little bit like Tai Chi, but I think Tai Chi is a little bit more slower. Uh, Budokan tends to be very, uh, a little bit more intense. Um, uh, they combine things like uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu movements in it. And they're Jiu -jitsu. Jiu Jitsu, yeah. So Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, elements into it. Um, and a lot of the movements, which are very different to traditional yoga, is when you are doing something, you are thinking of it from a weight bearing point of view so normally yoga you know you kind of make a shape and someone could very easily mm. push you over where whereas in in Budokan, it is actually about are you able to carry your weight and somebody else's weight at the same time because it becomes more functional it becomes more uh, adaptable in terms of how you're doing the movement rather than just creating a shape i love that i don't know if we're going to finish be able to get all this information in an hour um, <laughs> Probably. Wow, there's so much. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about the naked yoga first, and then we can move on to the other stuff. Um, absolutely, absolutely. So, how did you get into the naked yoga? Okay, so um, I, uh, I, the first time I actually ever taught a, a naked class was actually at a yoga retreat um and and i um i remember like going there not really not sure what i was going to do like i was like i have no idea and in fact it didn't really pop into my mind until i got there and i was like oh um how do i do this <laughs> yes. because teaching teaching yoga is very different to you know like putting it all together and um so i i taught you a very traditional class how I normally teach just naked you know like I uh, the style that I teach uh, I do assists I literally do an assist to every single person in the class as I go through my class I don't I don't sit in the front and make the shapes or the you know the postures uh, mm. and do them myself I literally go and assist each every single student in the class and um, I literally uh, at a retreat it was the first time I ever tried it out 
to Jeanette, it was nerve-wracking because you think, uh, you know, all eyes on you as the yoga teacher. You think everyone's watching you. Um, you know, you think uh, you start all of a sudden thinking about uh, about your own body. <laughs> you start thinking about how good enough is your body to be naked in front of other people. And uh, yeah, I think I think initially before I ever went to this retreat, uh, I had to ask myself that question. You know, like what is this thing that I'm resisting the most? And for me, it was really not being comfortable naked for somebody else to see me. You know, it was it was it was like, but why? And I realized it had nothing to do with anybody else besides myself. Mm-hmm. It had to do with my own body confidence, my own. Uh, my own self-image um, and being comfortable with being who I am, you know, and that's where the practice comes from. Um, the practice is about really being the most vulnerable, most authentic version of yourself. You know, there are no there are no no, no name brands, no funny, you know, uh, clothing. There's nothing. It is just literally you. You know, um, it's the probably the first time you will feel just who you are you're showing up and just being who you are and that's mm. the practice you know um i slowly uh, started learning a little bit more of how this practice uh, began and evolved and uh in fact it started uh in very old sort of like tantric kind of practice yes. um and what would happen was uh it would be part of rituals where uh it 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 required sort of a specific energy in these tantric rituals. And these rituals were more around, um, you know, finding a spiritual path, finding a connection with a higher self. And, yes, and this practice, I've this frozen. Practice, yeah, oh, you frozen. Um, and, the, and the practice is really to get you to connect in the spiritual level at a level that is, authentic vulnerable and just really who you are and yes. they, they they did it nude because there was there was no masking you know mm. there was no covering of who you are mm. it was also a practice of actually letting go of all the material things in your life you know letting mm. go of um you know letting go of anything that is materialistic it's mm. a practice where you are just allowing yourself to be aware of your body and being aware of what is happening to you you know yeah. and 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 it's really about letting go of any inhibitions yes. um it is really about accepting yourself mm. and it's also letting go of any shame that you may have you know mm. you know shame in our bodies a judgments that we may have about ourselves and and that's really what it is it is it is it is you know we we are very attached to uh you know our bodies <laughs> mm, absolutely. We're, we're well they are to... they it's it's what people see first when they first they see the face and then they see the body absolutely. um first, can you hear me sajiv i can hear you i think it's frozen yeah i see you frozen okay. but i can hear you <laughs> okay good you know i as what I love about what you're saying about the body and um, Tantra, you know, f- first about accepting our bodies. Um, it, if, when you're able to walk naked in yourself, it's really about letting go of the shame that we associate with our bodies. And um, when you talk about Tantra and being in our bodies and being okay with that, for me, it's all about self-love. And um, I interviewed um, the uh, natu- a couple, they're naturists, um, Ethel and Amanda, last, was it last week? Yeah, I think it was, I can't even remember anymore. Um, on, uh, they, they are the, um, they run a naturist retreat called Sun Eden. And it was beautiful. So exciting to hear their perspective of being um, naked in in nature. Nature. Um, so this really sounds like an amazing opportunity to be one with nature, and especially accepting your body and being in love with your body. And I understand how difficult it must be 
initially? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, a lot of the... I oh, know I've lost your your audio now. No, it's not your fault. Lost your audio. Oh, can you hear me now? Oh, there we go. Now got you. Yeah, I got me. Okay. Um, I was I was saying uh, a lot of the people that do come uh, to to naked yoga, or are thinking about coming to a naked yoga class, or contemplating the idea. Mm. The first aspect is that they are very uncomfortable with their own bodies to be able to mm. do that. They, they, um, you, you know, and what I really like to say is that we are nature too. You know, as yeah. much as we like think nature are plants and animals and mountains and seas and oceans and rivers, uh, we are nature too. And when we're connecting to nature, we need to be able to connect with ourselves too. We need to connect with our bare, bare selves. You know, yeah. and it gives us it gives us that opportunity to to be okay. Be you know, if we are able to accept ourselves as we are, we are able to accept other people, mm. and we are able to find joy and happiness. You know, we get mm. to connect um, in a, a much more meaningful way. Mm. Uh, you know, to ourselves and to other people. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to make a statement now. I mean, our bodies are how much percent water? <laughs> So pretty much majority water, water. Hey? 80%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah so we're very much affected by the moon and the the waves you know the tidal, tidal waves of the moon and changes um so tell me sajiv uh, i've got lots of questions to ask and i always say that when i interview a guest i generally have experienced um in one way or another what i'm interviewing you know the experience of around what I'm interviewing. Naked yoga is not one of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the idea of being naked in nature is something that I'm really wanting to do um, and hoping I will be. But somehow um, bearing my naked butt in front of other, you know, in the eyes of somebody else, is not something I'm so keen to do. Um, and, you know, it takes a lot of courage to do that. Uh, what is more, what is more, um, your, the percentage of men versus women? And I know I'm meant to be um, careful about cis men and cis women and whatever, whatever. But um, for the purpose of this penis owners and vagina hold, uh, owners, you know, what is the percentage that you really more popular? Okay, I'm um, when I uh, when I started uh, this, I, I I've really just only been around sort of like men's naked yoga. Mm -hmm. um, so the classes were predominantly designed for men, and I, it's a growing trend um, worldwide. Um, but there's also now a trend for naked female. Yogi, uh, yogis, you know, them doing their yoga naked too. Um, there are classes where they are separate. So, you know, uh, because there is, there's healing in brotherhood, there's healing in sisterhood. Um, and there are very, very, very few classes that I know of that is a mixed group. Mm -hmm. um, because, because I think it depends where you are in the world. Um, and the belief systems around it. I, mm -hmm. I I have a very funny story that happened to me. I very many years ago I used to work in Germany, mm -hmm. and um, I one of the traditions I love doing after you know uh, going to the gym is to like you know sit down in a sauna and you know just kind of like detoxify a little bit. And this was before I was comfortable even being naked. Here mm -hmm. I go with like flip flops and I had like board shorts. You know, not even like. Like like a tiny swimming costume. I had like board shorts that I go yeah. into a, into a sauna, and somebody stops me and is like, "No, no, no! You can't come in with like plastic flip flops. You need to take that out." And I mm -hmm. and I like land up walking tiptoe into the sauna, <laughs> thinking, "Ew, this is gross." And I put my towel down and I sit down. And then uh, there was a guy that like you know he flips uh, my shorts and he's like, uh, "And this needs to come off too." And then like <laughs> like look at him to be like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> yeah, you know. And and then I think somebody realized that I was not from Germany and they kind of like 
told him, you know, he's not from here. Let us just, you know, um, be okay with ourselves. Yeah, like this. Okay, but I felt awkward because now all of a sudden I realized that I was the only non-naked person in this yeah. seminar, right? And yes. now I was sitting feeling a little bit uncomfortable. I didn't realize that I, it looked like somebody from behind. I was like, oh, this, you know, this guy really looks like a girl from behind. And mm. he turns around and realized I was mistaken. It was actually a female. Mm. And she came in completely naked into the sauna. Mm. And here I was like freaking out thinking, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Mm. But all of these German men did not even look at her, didn't even give her like a look off, you know, like not even a creepy look. It was just like mm. a normal daily occurrence, yes. <laughs> you yes. know. And I, I really feel that when it comes to being out there, it really is our belief systems. So South mm. Africans are very conservative. We mm, do not show so. we do not show any part of our bodies. But go to Europe. You know, yes. you'll find you'll find them naked everywhere. You'll find people tanning naked on the beach, tanning naked in the parks. Uh that is like a normal thing for them. Yeah. You know? And 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 when we're trying to get used to our bodies being that way. You know, our bodies are exactly how it is. We learn that um, the stretch marks we have, the scars we have, those blemishes that we don't like are actually normal. Everyone mm. has them. No one's bodies look like that pe uh, perfect uh, magazine cover. Absolutely. You know, and, and once you see it out in the normal world, you then realize that your body is very normal. And that's how Absolutely. it's supposed to be. And that's what appeals to me about the, the naturist. Um, resort is that nobody is judging you because they nobody's perfect there uh you're just normal in the in that environment and um yeah there's a there's a kind of uh blanket rule there that this is not about sex um you know no one's going to hit on you um you can just really walk around as comfortable in your own skin and because every, no, everybody knows, you know, we, we really aren't perfect. But, um, so I must excuse, my camera is unfortunately a bit faulty, but that's okay because you can hear my voice. Um, and since we are talking about bodies, we all know that summer bodies are built in winter. But that can be easier said than done. So why not join fitness expert Mo on the Health Fix with Mo? for an inspirational weekly fitness podcast show for fitness novices. Mo chats to the best in local health and fitness experts in an effort to get information to help you achieve your aesthetic fitness and health goals. Subscribe on YouTube, listen on any good podcast platform, or find it on www.yourmedia.co.za. Your Media. Hashtag where you are. Right, Sajiv. So tell yeah. me yeah. Um, the taboo around naked yoga. Absolutely. Yeah. I I think um, the taboos come from from generally a lot of people's imaginations. Um, I think the very first class I taught, uh, I had this really long email from uh, this lady uh, because I was teaching a men's nude class and, you know, she, she decided to email me and she literally thought there was some orgy going on. <laughs> mm, yes. You're like, yeah. you're like, you know, like, I was like, okay, um, I, I don't understand where you get this information from because... Mm it's a yoga class like we're doing a spiritual practice but we are allowing men to take their clothes off you know there's freedom in movement there is uh you know there's nothing there's nothing going on that is you know that is sexual, sexual. It, mm. it is it is men being comfortable with their bodies and doing yoga 
Mm. And so, so people think that the, the is because you're naked, it's automatically connected to something sexual, mm. and that's not true. It is nothing sexual that goes on. You know, like I, I, I have seen some yoga teachers who teach a naked yoga class, moving into other tantric practices, maybe uh, a self lingam massage, or you know, something where it does maybe relate to sexual energy. But that is generally spoken about before you go to it, you know, like you don't go to a naked yoga class and all of a sudden they do it. No, it's, it's you there because you know what is going to happen, mm. you know? And uh, the, the, the style of yoga where you're naked is not sexual at all. There are a lot of concerns from guys, especially about what happens if I get an erection, you know, like they're, mm. they're very, very afraid of like, you know, okay, first, being comfortable being naked with the room of other naked people. Uh, uh, then, then there's the whole thing of like, okay, what if I get an erection, if I get turned on? Yeah. And and my, my belief system around this is that the world has demonized and made erections such a bad thing. Mm. Surely it's not a bad thing. It's a normal biological thing that mm. happens, you know? Yeah. Um, it, and we shouldn't shame it. We shouldn't we shouldn't overemphasize it. If somebody has one, we're not going to point at it and laugh at it and you know, we're not going to shame them for it happening. It's normal. It's supposed to happen. That's you know, when you do yoga, your body and your brain starts producing good feel hormones. Yes. And that can result in things happening and it could be out of your control. You may not even be thinking anything sexual and mm. you may get an erection. And it's normal. It's supposed to yeah. happen. It's okay. Like in a group of men, if someone has an erection, that's okay. We should be okay with that. Um, and and so I think it's really important that when people think about the taboos, they think about, you know, it's not normal for a man to have an erection in public, you know, and if they do, it's ridiculous. You know, it's like mm. it's a point that people think it's a terrible thing. But, you know, there are so many things that we should not uh, think is wrong. You know, like um, there are obviously a, 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 an aspect where men are aroused and they will, you know, they will get it. But there are a lot of things biologically we can't stop from happening. You know, yeah. I uh, it's a little bit like when females have a period. It's not a dirty thing. It's not a not a bad thing no one should be shamed for it you know it's something yeah. that's normal it's we're humans our bodies are part of nature and that's what it does mm. so so that's, I, that's I, I just imagine that um you know for a man to get a, an erection in a you know in a group and uh, where his body is so exposed i can imagine that is it can be quite traumatizing even even if you or even if you do make it a normal occurrence, um, sure, especially for a first timer, I can imagine that's quite difficult. Um, tell me the majority of your um, clients or members, or are they gay or straight or mixed? What is the majority? Yeah, I, I, I think there is a majority of gay men uh, mm. who do come. But it is a little bit mixed. I think you I, I, you get straight men coming through uh, as well. And uh, I think I think whether whatever your sexual preference is, I think all men have a natural curiosity about their bodies compared yes. to other men's. Like men are very competitive. You know, they want to yeah. know are they big enough? <laughs> yes. Are they, oh, yes. Are they strong enough? <laughs> uh. You know. And there's this very weird sort of natural wanting to compare your body, you know? Yes. Um, so, so men are very fascinated with other men's bodies too. And and that's okay. I think I think that's allowed, you know, men should be comfortable enough, uh, no matter what the sexual preference is, to be okay with all bodies. And, and uh, yeah, I, I do think they may be, Initially, a lot of men who think, oh, naked yoga will be a very, very much something that will satisfy a sexual aspect about them. You know, if you, can you be a little more specific? 
Yeah, like as in as in I think they they have this curiosity of, you know, uh they're other naked men um and they want to uh you know it's it will feel good for them. It's a a, a feeling a sensation that you know they get to see other naked men, they get to uh you know experience that. It may have maybe that feeling and sensation. And so spaces like that needs to be very safe. You know, mm. even even if it is a mixed group of men and women, uh, it's very important that whoever is teaching it has the oh. ability to bring them back to say, well, actually, this is the intention. Yeah. If, if it if it if it is a sexual workshop, then cool, you know, everybody knows. But if the mm. intention is to connect with your own body, to mm. be able to learn how to be vulnerable, be authentic, you are then going to bring them to understand that this is the space that we're trying to create. And I, I've had a few times uh, men who are, you know, they were there maybe for other reasons. You know, they were there mm. to, you know, whatever it could be. But, well, you know, like pick up other men? Pick up other men to yeah. to, to oogle and look at them to, right. you know, you know, they think that you're going to play with each other. It's not that. Mm. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but they soon realize once we in our practice, when we do our yoga practice, they don't have time to think about it. There is no yes. time to, you know, there's there's maybe that initial awkward five seconds where everybody feels a little bit, oh, I'm vulnerable and naked now. Uh, <laughs> yes. Everyone can see me. But after that, no one remembers. You actually forget that you are naked. You actually yeah. don't realize you don't have your clothes on. And I suppose if, you, if you're really in your spirituality and in your body and it's becoming a real um, body experience, you really don't, you're not, you're not in the, the class. You're in your body. You're in your exactly. breath. And exactly. you're in your, yeah. You're not in that space. I get that completely. Yeah. So so it, it is possible for somebody to may go there who may have weird intentions, but mm. I think it's always the space that creates that environment of you now in your body. You know, mm. you're now focusing on the movement, you're now focusing on the breath. Mm. You have to I teach generally with an intention with you mm. know that I share with the class. There's uh there is a uh, we call it in yoga like a dharma talk you know where there is yeah. wisdom imparted in the class before there is an actual movement practice um and it works through every movement that that intention is there you know mm. um and very quickly people kind of attune to what it is you know like initially they may think oh i'm going to look at somebody or someone's going to look at me or whatever but it becomes very quickly a spiritual journey. You, yes. you, you, you actually don't even notice that you are naked. You, in fact, forget you are. I get and it. You just, yeah. You know, you, you, you all of a sudden realize how much freer you can move. You know, you realize how much your clothing can restrict you, you know, yeah. um, movement wise. Um, and, and for some, you may feel very exposed. You know, there are some yoga poses you do. And you realize, well, I have mm. never felt this exposed in my entire life. Yes. But everybody in the room is doing it. And you feel safe that everybody is. You know, like there's safety in that. There is uh, an ability to be okay. And yeah. like I said, we are all human. We're all part of nature. Yeah. There, that is all all okay for it to happen, no matter what it is. And uh, we, we, yeah, we feel like, you know, like certain parts of us, um, when we do yoga, we feel like, oh, this is very much something that even my intimate partners don't even see, you know. But mm. and it's because you're allowing yourself to experience it. You become so much more freer because mm. you allow yourself to really be in that moment. And mm. somebody who practices naked yoga will never, you know, allow their minds to be distracted by how their body is. They are mm. in moment they're experiencing the joy and happiness of movement they're enjoying mm. uh, what is there they become very very present so Sajiv, would you say that this practice has grown over the last in terms of popularity over the last few years or tell me about that yes yes um it has grown immensely um there are internationally 
so many naked yoga teachers. In fact, um, if you were to, you know, uh, search naked yoga, you'll most likely find someone <laughs> mm. teaching naked yoga close to you. <laughs> oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, it has grown. It's grown. In South Africa, I, I do know uh, in Cape Town and in Johannesburg are probably the two areas where you'll probably find naked yoga. Uh, the smaller towns, maybe not so much, but definitely Cape Town and definitely here in Johannesburg, you'll probably find a class. Um, but it is it is growing. Uh, I think a lot of people, you know, uh, there's always a new a new uh, a new thing happening in yoga. You know, yoga. Yeah. You know, there was Bikram yoga where you had to sit in a hot yes. room, and there was, you know, there was uh, yoga where you brought weights into the class, and you know, mm. there's aerial yoga, and now people are wanting to allow themselves to immerse themselves more deeper into our practice. You know, not yeah. to say that clothed yoga won't do that for you, but yeah. It gives you a different element. You know, if you are struggling with body image, struggling with self-confidence, struggling with, um, you know, connecting yourself with your own body, then naked yoga is a practice for you. It's something that will challenge you initially. But once you've gone past that initial challenge, you will actually enjoy it. You'll find it is so much easier, so much more pleasurable. You don't Mm -hmm. have to worry about making your yoga clothes dirty because you don't wear any (laughs) yeah no i love that and you know what i'm thinking my mind is going towards sensuality and sexuality because when you are in your body even if you've got your clothes on um just being in your body makes you so much more aware of yourself and i'm also thinking about being in the gym you know i get how affairs happen in gyms i really do because you're standing in clothing that is very very tight um and so much is revealed in that clothing um people are so aware of their bodies in the gym and they're all kind of checking each other out whether it be males and females or males and males and men whatever it is and because you are so aware of your body, the way it moves, the way your muscles are working, um, and you're watching other people, it's a very sexual experience. Um, and there's a lot of as you, sexual tension, and there's a lot of love hormones that are moving around, oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine, and uh, you know testros- testosterone and so on. Or flowing. So if you are in your body during yoga and you're breathing and you're really in touch with certain parts of your body, especially yoni and lingam, which is Sanskrit for vagina and penis, and Sanskrit is the ancient um, um, language, Indian, what I say, Eastern, in Indian ancient language. Yeah. Yeah. for um penis and vagina or if you if you're focused on that area opening and flowering and breathing into those areas and you were talking about sexual healing as well through tantra yes. um you know it can be a very um a beautiful way to t- to get in touch with your sensuality so maybe you can take us a little bit into the the yo- uh, the tantric spin-off absolutely absolutely yeah so um my my style of uh tantra is uh i would say also uh, goes back to quite a traditional um shivaic kind of practice so in fact in tantra lingam um does not mean penis (laughs) tell me more it means a pillar of light okay it's it means uh, what that pillar of light means is uh, in in tantra and where it comes from, the origin of it. So uh, in in tantric uh, philosophy, there's Shiva and Shakti, right. and Shiva uh, once uh, wanted to um, display his power, his energy, uh, and he became what what was called a pillar of light, where there was no start and there's no end to it. And this pillar of light is what a lingam is. Okay. 
it is it represents Shiva's energy pure purely in its pure purest form. And is there any uh, masculine yeah. energy associated with that? Absolutely. So so okay. that's Shiva is considered to be like um, generally seen as the masculine, the the yang energy in in, right. in tantra, right? Um, but it's not necessarily lingam. No, does not necessarily mean penis. It means oh. a masculine energy. Maybe that what also makes it very interesting. You know, uh, earlier on we spoke about you know bodies. You may be a man, but may be an owner of maybe a vagina. Mm. You mm. know, uh, in tantra. Everybody has both masculine and feminine energies in them. It's right. not. It's not because you have a penis. You are Correct. masculine energy. Uh, uh. Um, you know, and 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 the same thing with the yoni. A yoni actually means a, sort of like the creation of the universe. It's part right. that houses the universe. You know, uh, which is can be very symbolic. I think. I think maybe that's where a lot of uh, tantra practices. Have taken lingam to mean penis and yoni mm. to be vagina, right. but it it actually goes bigger than that. It's wider, you know. It doesn't restrict us to just our body parts. It goes mm. to understanding masculine, feminine energies, understanding is that the, the shakti, and that is shakti. Yoni represented by the shakti energy. Yes. It is a feminine energy. It doesn't mean female necessarily. Mm. It mm. means it's it's a different energy that is the yang. It's the yin. Mm. It's the slow. It's the nurturing. Mm. It's the um, one that has the ability to grow thing. You know, where masculine energy is about, you know, direction. It's about wanting mm. to, uh, you know, uh, be very organized. Be very, uh, you know, mm. uh, structured. If you want to call it that, mm. uh, you know. Um, and when both of these energies are in balance. Mm. that's when you are at peace. That's when you are the most happy, right. you know? Right. And that that kind of is where I think where a lot of sexual practices come from in Tantra is because it is this connection of masculine and feminine energies and bringing them together, sharing I love them. That. Mm. I haven't heard together. such a beautiful explanation of that um, before, really. And, and that's, thank you. That's, yeah. Very enlightening. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so therefore, uh, you can have two penises. You can have two vaginas. You can have a penis and a vagina. <laughs> yeah. It does not matter <laughs> what, what 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 sexual organ you have, but doesn't it brings really matter, yes. it doesn't matter mm -hmm. because it is a construct around balancing masculine and feminine energies, mm -hmm. and in a sexual point of view, um, the ability to do a naked yoga practice allows you to start moving energy in your body you learn about sexual energy and how to transmute sexual energy into something else and transmission of like this energy from sexual energy to creative energy mm -hmm. healing energy um spiritual energy you know whatever love energy um mm -hmm. that is what happens in tantra um it is a practice where you can embody it you can feel it in your body you learn about pleasure mm -hmm. and what's also really uh important to note is that um which is why it also exists in like hindu philosophy uh, you know the sexual aspect of it is that you know uh, sexuality should not be hidden away we should yes. not be ashamed of it uh, neither should we make it the center of our lives and highlight to the point where it's, you know, we give it the term that it's, you know, ooh, this is what is the ultimate thing you need to do. Yeah. It's part of our lives. It's part of our, how we're being created. You know, we are mm -hmm. created with so many aspects. And um, there are a lot of temples in India where there are uh, pretty much statues of, you know, people having sex on, you know, the outside of the temples. And the reason yes. why they're there is because it is part of life. It's right. not something to be ashamed of, you know. And this is uh, where when we learn to accept that it is normal, it is part of our lives, that we are able to enjoy it more. We don't have shame for it. We don't think there's something wrong with it. And we're able to 
feel all the pleasure that we need to. You know, we get to experience it in its entirety rather than it should be kept in a little box. It so would is, you say, sorry to interrupt you, yeah, would you yeah. say that um, Indian culture is a lot more accepting of sexual pleasure or would you say that, we, you know, they st- the, the society is still quite stuck um, in the taboos? Because, I mean, it would be beautiful if, you know, yeah. it was. Yeah, I, I think at least from a philosophy point of view, it is very open. I mean... Mm. Uh, Hindu philosophy has the Kama Sutra in it. <laughs> mm. Mm. It forms part of Hindu philosophy. And but how practical is it in people's lives? Uh, well, this is the thing. In philosophy, it only really becomes powerful as if we practice it. Yes. You know, oh. and in practice, in practice, people find a lot of it taboo. They find mm. it that you know that this is wrong or. Someone has installed another belief system to them that what they should be doing is mm. wrong, and and that's that's not what it is about, you know. Like yeah. like I think Eastern societies have created. Uh, funny enough, they are very much more. Um, um, uh, you know, they think these things are taboo. It is because a lot of Western thinking came mm. to Absolutely. Eastern cultures and affected them, where yeah. a lot of us used to be very open, very sort of like understanding and then western culture changed it and now it's funny how the east is so backwards around us and the west is coming back to understanding what sexuality is and understanding this and making it not taboo um you know because because a lot of the tantric practices they were there for a specific reason but um the west has definitely explored it more it's there it exists it's not not and the west are using eastern philosophy (laughs) Yes. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy. And we were talking earlier about Europeans being so um, sexually liberated so much more. And they really do walk the talk, as you saw Absolutely. in the sauna. Um, and um, anybody who has traveled to Scandinavian countries, Denmark and Norway and so on, the women are so much more comfortable in themselves in their sexuality, there's no shame around their bodies. There's no guilt around their sexual expression. And it's really, really beautiful. We need to really learn from these women. Um, but it's also about the shame and the the body shaming that does not exist um, as young children, um, you know, towards young children and things like that. So, yeah, that's the work that we have to do here in South Africa in particular is to stop the body shaming. Um, quickly. Um, Absolutely. So, Jeev, yeah. I, you know, unfortunately, yeah. our time is running out. Wow, um, so quick. <laughs> I know, I, I, and I knew when we started that this was going to need more and more conversation, especially because I love the tantric aspect of you know moving from the yoga towards the the tantra and incorporating it in in it. Um, so, wow, and you know, I, I guess that the reason, well, I'm, I'm assuming that the reason that less women are so um, open to, less women are not so open to naked yoga is because of their, their issues around their bodies and their sexuality. And um, a lot of men are more comfortable, as you said, in their nakedness. And you said around they comparing bodies and being competitive and so on, whereas women are really, really shy in their nakedness and they judge, they feel judged all the time. So it would be really beautiful if more and more women did take to this to feel yeah. so much more um, okay in their bodies. Yeah, I think I think uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, where we are as a society, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I I always feel in South Africa we are very much stuck in a, like first chakra kind of basis, and that yes. relates to survival. You know, Absolutely. we 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 are very protective. We want to mm. keep things safe. Um, you know, um, once once we get past that element of that first chakra, that first survival mode, we move to our second chakra. Then we will start seeing females feeling more liberated, feeling 
able to, you know, express themselves, express their naked body. People will be more comfortable showing, you know, their naked bodies, their breasts. You know, like for men, it's easier because there's really not a lot that men don't show if, you know, mm. to be, to be, you know, if you, if you were to see a naked picture of a, of a man, generally there's just a little bit that will be stripped out. For a lady, it yeah. feels like it's, more, you know, Everything. swimming costume for yeah. men is smaller. For ladies, exactly. it tends to be, you know, they cover, they cover more. And, yeah. and, you know, once we get comfortable with our bodies and we allow that to happen, then I think females, women will be more comfortable with that, uh, you know, and, and it starts off with females doing it together. They need to learn yes. to accept each other's bodies first. There needs to be a sisterhood of knowing how to be vulnerable and authentic mm. with more females in the sacred space. This mm. divine feminine energy, you know, mm. allow that to to blossom because we actually yes. do need it in our country. We, we need really that do. Energy. We need we that really energy. Do. And if you look at the um, <clears throat> the African culture where women are dancing with naked breasts and there's no judgment there. Absolutely not. Um, and a lot of black women will openly feed their babies, breastfeed their babies without any shame. And nobody, you know, walk past a white woman walking past a black woman feeding a baby is like disgusting. Like how could she these cover up or can't, you know, shame and guilt and the whole thing. So you know, we really, as Africans, we need to incorporate the traditions of Africa. Um, but I think it's also a lot has to do with we need to accept as women that there's an age and stage when we look like something. And then we, there's an age and stage where we don't look 20 or 25 anymore. We evolve and we change. and We have to accept that change. Um, obviously, we've got to look after our, ourselves in terms of health and we've got a gym, we've got to eat healthy, we've got to make sure that our, our hearts are well, we can't become obese and so on. But, um, you know, from a health perspective, but definitely we've got to understand that our, our bodies are changing. They cannot remain young, lithe um, bodies in forever. Yeah. No, um, yeah. Sajiv, what an inspiring, informative, um, just such an enlightening conversation we've had. You've you really given me so much inspiration not to do yoga because my body cannot move. <laughs> <laughs> I tried yoga one. I think I just put myself further and further into um, a spasm. That just would not relieve for months and months. So I'm not going to do yoga. But um, <laughs> as I said, I'm definitely willing to be um, naked in, in nature. So people can get hold of you. Um, we will put it on our website. And thank you, thank you, thank you for being so available again. And it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, if anybody wants to get more information or if they're interested, uh, just, yeah, uh, they're very welcome to contact me. And again, thank you so much. Uh, it was really great to share what, uh, what work I do in terms of, mm. uh, you know, Tantra and, you know, the naked yoga. So thank you. Such a pleasure. So have a beautiful uh, weekend ahead. I don't know what your weather is like, but ours, we are raining here. Looks like rain yeah. for the whole weekend. Um, yeah. well, we might have probably... needed, so. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So just look after yourself and thanks very much. And we know where to find you should we want to continue this conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. And I hope you have a fantastic weekend too. And uh, yeah, enjoy all the rain. <laughs> Thank you so much. All the best, Shajiv. Thank you so much. Yeah.